happy Wednesday morning. Thanks for waking up with us. We're going to get to your day's top stories in just a few minutes. But first, mm -hmm. Larry Sprinkle is here with a check of the forecast. And Larry, I am seeing a lot of raindrops. Yeah, it's going to be one of those days with clouds around. I wouldn't say a complete washout, but certainly something to think about. Be prepared for some showers. I think with the cloud cover today, not much above the upper 70s to near 80 degrees. Those showers could continue right through early tomorrow morning. Our seven day forecast shows showers in the forecast today. A little more sunshine tomorrow. We'll get the temperature up to about 85 and then a better chance of rain again on Friday. This weekend, not the best weekend because we get some clouds out there, a chance of showers, but the temperature should be OK. We'll be for the most part low 80s. We stay in the low 80s Monday and Tuesday of next week, and that is your first one forecast, Carolyn. Very thanks so much. All right, turning to those five big stories of the day in your morning rush. CMS leaders laying out their plan to get students back into the classroom for the district to move forward with in person learning. Uh, there has to be very little COVID-19 spread in the community. Ideally, the district wants less than 10 cases for every 100,000 people. There's a special meeting next Thursday to look at the numbers, the current numbers and the community spread of the virus. Now, this is all taking place as a group of local parents now suing the district. They say remote learning it just isn't working. The parents are alleging that the district is denying students their right to an education. They want a judge to tell the district to put students back into the classroom immediately. A CMS spokesperson says the district has not officially been served. After another deadly weekend in the Queen City, Charlotte leaders proposing a new pilot program in order to help stop the violence. It's a collaboration with a group called Cure Violence. Now this group comes in, they look at the data, then train and hire community members to intervene, hopefully before things get out of hand. That's the point of it. The pilot program will be tested in the Beatty's Ford Road area first. If it's a success, it will move on. Democrats in North Carolina suing election officials over the state's absentee ballot rules. They say the new process to address mail-in ballot errors doesn't do enough to make sure everyone's vote actually gets counted. The lawsuit argues that small mistakes, things like missing a signature on the envelope of the ballot, need easier and faster fixes. Well, a sign that the pandemic is slowly well, we're getting back to a little bit of a normal. The NASCAR Hall of Fame will reopen one week from today. Starting on the 16th, it will be open every single day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. except on Tuesdays. The hall says it's increased the cleaning measures there and that masks will be required. And that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Good morning, everybody. A huge talker in the entertainment world. You'll probably see this all over your social media pages as the Academy Awards, they're making changes to what movies can be nominated and win best picture in the Oscars category. So let me show you when this is coming into effect. It really has started after a year's worth of the hashtag Oscars so white trending year after year. People saying there was a lack of inclusion. So now for a movie to be eligible for best picture, it has to meet two of the four criteria, on-screen representation, leadership, opportunity, audience development, and those changes are gonna be in full effect by 2024. Hundreds of people have been reacting to this story on Facebook, also on Twitter, including the woman that's credited with starting the hashtag Oscar So White in the first place. She says thank you to everybody. She appreciates the participation in the hashtag, that this is a small step forward. It is some progress. Others are saying the logic doesn't add up as it would actually exclude some movies created by people of color and that did so well this past award season. Colin thinks that it is up to Hollywood to provide these opportunities, the inclusive environment rather than the Oscars. So join the conversation. Leave us a comment below right here what you think about these changes and use our hashtag WakeUpCLT. Carolyn, back to you. Rachel, thanks so much. It is time now to connect the dots when we make the news make sense. So we've all been glued to our screens a little more these days. Admit it, it's true, and kids have been too, but experts say it's not as bad for them as you might think. For kids in virtual learning, more screen time is unavoidable this year. But should parents be worried about children glued to their screens all day long? Let's connect the dots. When it comes to the research, there are not a lot of clear answers. Some studies say increased time in front of a screen can lead to higher rates of obesity, and preliminary research suggests it could have some effect on short-term memory. So what do the experts say? One digital media expert who specializes in kids and electronic says not all screen time is created equal. While we may see them playing Minecraft as wasted time, in reality, kids can learn important life skills from those games. 
Also, there's a good chance screens could play a role in their future careers, so knowledge and experience with how they work could be essential. But experts do agree, time away from the screen is important too. Make sure your kids know that content online is often designed to be addictive. And if you really want to keep the lines of communication open, you might want to ask your kids how they feel about your screen time. And that's Connecting the Dots. Now to some stories to help keep you and your family safe and sound today. Labor Day marked the unofficial end of summer. Despite the pandemic, though, people say summer wasn't so bad. In fact, only 16% of people say this was the worst summer ever. Most people ranked summer as average, though they were disappointed by some missed vacations. That makes sense. A relaxing Labor Day may have helped, too. The number one activity this holiday weekend was to stay home and chill out. I'm all about that. Well, if you've been wanting to unplug from social media for a while, how about you do it and you get paid at the same time? Facebook is going to pay people to deactivate their Facebook and Instagram accounts ahead of the election in November. It's not a ton of money. They're offering between a $10 and 20 bucks a week. They say it's basically an experiment. They want to see just how big of an impact sites like Facebook and Instagram make on democracy. Well, make sure you watch us. Don't unplug from us each and every morning starting at 430 on Wake Up Charlotte, Monday through Friday. We are here for you. Have a great day.